You may have come across the notion that with the right frequency, anything becomes achievable, even levitation. Randall Carlson talks about it on the Joe Rogan podcast. Take a look. Everything vibrates at a frequency, and if you know that frequency, you can control things. This is the model, and this is diagramming all the frequencies of the elements and what their vibrational frequencies are and the numbers that measure those frequencies. And they're all the numbers we get from looking at these ancient traditions that recur over and over and over again. And um, so through somehow, through this technology, they're able able to move stones or cut stones or all the above? All the above. This helps us understand how the cut in the mysterious Al Nassar rock formation in Saudi Arabia might have happened. There are two huge boulders and they're split by a really smooth crack indicating someone used advanced methods for cutting. Regarding levitation, let me show you some evidence. In 2015, a device built by a team in Spain successfully levitated and manipulated small objects with sound. We call these transducers, which is just a fancy word for speakers. These speakers, they only work at one frequency and this frequency is 40 kilohertz, which we shouldn't be able to hear. Only bats, dogs, and other animals should be able to hear 40 kilohertz. But because the ultrasound is so powerful, if we put some particles, they should be kept in midair with the power of sound. And all these things that they are just being like kept there with air, actually it's not there, it's the ultrasound pushing them from all directions. Here's an interesting old video of an acoustic levitation device by Dr. David Deek. Scientists already knew that sound waves create oscillating pockets of pressurized air, which can produce a force on an object capable of counteracting the pull of gravity. But while ultrasound levitation devices do exist, they all rely on standing waves created when two sound waves of the same frequency are emitted from opposite directions and superimposed on one another. That means all previous devices require two sets of transducers. In 1987, Dr. David Deek designed designed and built an acoustic levitation and did a microgravity experiment for NASA related subject matter. The 12 inch cubed plexiglass helm holds resonant cavity has three speakers attached to the cube by aluminum acoustic waveguides. By applying a continuous resonant 600 Hz sound wave and adjusting the amplitude and phase relationship amongst the three speakers, he could control levitation and movement in all three axes of the ambient space. The research was used to show the effects of microgravity conditions in orbit in the space shuttle environment. In addition, there is evidence for a whole new type of medicine in which DNA can be influenced and reprogrammed by words and frequencies without cutting out and replacing single genes. Jerdef and his team successfully transformed frog embryos to salamander embryos simply by transmitting the DNA information pattern through frequency alone. Georgiev's research group proved that with this method, chromosomes damaged with x-rays, for example, can be repaired. They even captured information patterns of a particular DNA and transmitted it to another, thus reprogramming cells to another genome. So they successfully transformed, for example, frog embryos into salamander embryos simply by transmitting the DNA information patterns according to Russian researchers. Our DNA is not only responsible for the construction of our body, but also serves as data storage and communication. The Russian linguists found that the genetic code, especially in the useless 90%, follows the same rules as all our human languages. To this end, they compared the rules of syntax, semantics, and the basic rules of grammar. They found that the alkalines of our DNA follow regular grammar and have set rules just like our languages. So human languages did not appear coincidentally, but are a reflection of our inherent DNA. Swedish doctor Jal, a man of scientific background, found himself immersed in the mysticism of Tibet during a pivotal journey that unraveled the secrets of levitation. His story begins against the backdrop of the early 20th century when exploration and scientific curiosity were paramount. Having studied at Oxford, Dr. Jal's journey took an unexpected turn when, in 1939, he received an urgent message from a Tibetan friend while on an expedition for the English scientific society in Egypt. The 
message summoned him to Tibet to aid in the treatment of a revealed Lama, propelling him into a world where ancient wisdom and modern science converged. Upon arriving in Tibet, Dr. Jal not only became deeply involved in healing practices, but also stumbled upon hidden mysteries within the monastic traditions. Guided by his Tibetan friend, he ventured to a secluded meadow near a monastery, where an extraordinary phenomenon was said to take place. In this serene setting, a large hole in a rock wall revealed a platform constructed by monks at a height of about 250 meters. Ropes were used for the descent from the cliff's top, leading to the discovery of a polished slab of rock in the meadow. It was here that the secret of levitation was unveiled. A bowl-shaped cavity was prepared in the rock, and with the assistance of yak oxen, a stone block was maneuvered into the cavity. The stage was set for an awe-inspiring inspiring display of levitation. 19 strategically placed musical instruments, including drums and trumpets, played a crucial role in the levitation experiment. As the monks engaged in a symphony of chanting and drumming, the stone block placed in the specially prepared cavity defied gravity and ascended into the air. The spectacle was not only witnessed, but documented by Dr. Jal, who captured the event on film, showcasing a convergence of ancient Tibetan practices and scientific principles. The Rife Machine is a device that was created a long time ago by a smart guy named Dr. Rife Raymond. He thought vibrations were a big deal and could be used to treat diseases. He believed that everything, including diseases, has its own unique vibration. Dr. Rife made a special microscope to look at really tiny things like viruses. Using this microscope, he said he found the unique vibrations of different diseases. This means he could see the bad guys causing illnesses. Now, Here's what it gets interesting. Dr. Rife thought if you could send the right vibrations back to these bad guys, you could destroy them. It's like fighting fire with fire, but in a tiny battle inside your body. He called this idea the mortal oscillatory rate. Big words. But all it means is finding the right vibrations to knock out the bad stuff. Dr. Rife believed this could be a game changer for treating diseases. But you know how it goes. Not everyone believed him. Some people thought his ideas were a bit too out there and not everyone wanted to play his game. Even though he claimed success in curing diseases using his vibrational methods, his ideas faded away over time. Today, the Rife machine is still around and some people use it. It's a machine that produces specific vibrations claimed to target and eliminate harmful microorganisms. The idea is to bring your body back into balance by dealing with these bad vibes. However, it's crucial to note that mainstream medicine doesn't fully endorse or widely use the Rife machine. Cymatics, as discovered by Dr. Hans Jenny, explores the fascinating world of vibrational patterns. Dr. Jenny's interest in vibrations led to experiments where he visualized sound waves creating intricate patterns on substances like sand or water, a phenomenon termed cymatics. Dr. Jenny discerned that playing sounds generates vibrations, inducing patterns in diverse materials. It's akin to music producing shape as the sand or liquid dances in response to the sound. Different sounds result in distinct patterns, illustrating how vibrations influence the material world. His experiments emphasize that everything, even the unseen, vibrates, generating discernible patterns. Dr. Jenny proposed that understanding these patterns could unveil insights into the functioning of various systems. How does this relate to our bodies? Well, our bodies are reservoirs of vibrations. Every cell vibrates uniquely. Dr. Jenny's work sparks curiosity. Can we harness vibrations to comprehend and possibly benefit our bodies? Consider this. If sound can mold patterns in sand, can they influence our bodies too? Some advocate that exposing the body to specific vibrations or frequencies might confer health benefits, nudging ourselves in a positive direction. This leads us to Dr. Masaru Emoto. Dr. Masaru Emoto. He goes up on stage and he has a musical triangle that he hits, you know, like in an orchestra. He's hitting it over here. He gets a bing and about 30 yards or 30 feet away, is his interpreter standing here with the same exact 
a replica of that same size dryer, frequency tuned to the same frequency. And he tells his interpreter to put a microphone next to it. And suddenly this one starts to resonate. He hits that one over there. This one starts resonating. How much of your body is full of water? Most of your body is water. Now it gets interesting. Dr. Masaru Emoto's experiments on the effects of thoughts and words on water crystals revealed that positive influences like music and words of love create beautiful, well-defined crystals, while negative influences result in distorted and chaotic formations. So if the human body is over 60% water, how does the music we listen to affect us? Beyond the strange lyrics in many songs, there's an issue with the frequency they're tuned in. Watch this closely. Where we now play our music is in A440. Where did that come from? It used to be 417. A440 came in with the Roman Catholic Church. They suppressed the frequencies. They lost somehow the 152 of the best Gregorian chants, including the hymn to St. John the Baptist, which we've now recovered. That that particular hymn was what triggered Dr. Paleo's investigation, looking for those frequencies of vibration by which the music was played. It was known as the most uplifting hymn of the all the ages, the most spiritually uplifting hymn, hymn to St. John the Baptist. It was played to six tones. These are those six tones, these are those six frequencies. And so the A440 is what now is the standard tuning. That if you do the analysis, you know how I just showed you that the English language is 180 degrees flipped. I mean, you couldn't get farther away before coming back in a perfect circle, back to closer to the original, right? 180 degrees, that's as far as it can get. They did the same thing with the music. If you go A439, you're closer to one of the creator's tones. If you go A441, you're closer to one of the creator's original tones. That's how precisely it has been manipulated. To do what? To shut down the 95% of your brain particularly the right brain that operates the heart mind for the divine human community. Here is another metaphor so that you begin to understand what we're talking about. When you go driving your car and your channel on the radio is tuned to a station and you're grooving to the music, you love that music. As you get farther and farther away from the broadcasting tower, that music gets static. You start to lose the signal from the clear channel broadcast and it gets staticky. When it gets staticky, you get a little annoyed, but you want to listen to it. You really have a heart for that music. So you continue to listen to it for another 10, 15 miles. And suddenly it becomes so annoying that you just get disgusted. You go, ah, and you shut it off. And if you continue to listen to it, you get sick. That's what we're talking about, except you don't even know that you've been listening to the static your whole life. You don't even know what the true resonant frequency is because it has been kept. So in other words, the master composer, master conductor of the Universal Orchestra is singing love songs in 528, uplifting everything simultaneously. And we're the only species out of tune and accepting static. In 1939, the standard tuning pitch was changed from 432 hertz to 440 hertz. Even though prominent musicians protested and Professor Dussault from the Paris Conservatory wrote a referendum signed by 23,000 French musicians urging the preservation of A equaling 432 hertz, 444 hertz was still set as the standard for all concerts and musicians despite their protests. A strange thing happened in 1950 when the American government mandated that all musical equipment and broadcasts on TV and radio be at 440 hertz. Leonard G. Horowitz has written an extensive thesis on this subject and how the Rockefeller Foundation started the war on consciousness by imposing of A equaling 440 hertz standard tuning. Here's a snippet on some of the important texts from the document that I have embedded below. A at 440 hertz frequency music conflicts with chakras from the heart to the base of the spine. Alternatively, chakras above the heart are stimulated. Theoretically, the vibration stimulates ego and left brain function, suppressing the heart, mind, intuition and creative inspiration. Many musicians intuitively feel better tuning up or down, a bit sharp or flat, from A at 440 hertz.
that's standard tuning. More natural alternatives, especially 444 Hz or C at 528 Hz and A 432 Hz and have been growing in popularity. Brian T. Collins, who launched a website dedicated to posting articles supportive of this growing musical metaphysical movement for recovering optimal spirituality through music therapy. Collins wrote, the current tuning of music based on A 440 Hz does not harmonize on any level that corresponds to cosmic movement, rhythm or natural vibration. Mozart and Verdi both based their music on natural vibration and A 432 Hz was nicknamed the Verdi tuning. Most Western music, including popular New Age music, is still tuned at unnatural 440 Hz. The difference between A at 440 Hz and A 432 Hz is only 8 vibrations per second, but it is a perceptible difference in the human consciousness experience. Many musicians, mathematicians, physicians, physicists and even geneticists are now celebrating A at 444 Hz or C at 528 Hz as an apparent carrier wave of love broadcasting universally from the heart of the electromagnetic electric matrix. These revelations represent an opportunity to rediscover our spiritual roots in music in accordance with an accelerating spiritual renaissance.